Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Pablo Chauke. For those of you that don't know me, I work at HD Barnett as a training and outreach coordinator. And part of my job is to work with a team to organize monthly webinars. And for the May webinar, I'm excited to introduce an interesting um, theme and interesting speaker as well, who was super excited and willing uh, when I invited her to come um, give this talk. So let me on cancer genomics, as you can see on the slide. Um, so the title is cancer genomics. And this talk is gonna be for 40 to 50 minutes. And at the end, we're gonna have 10 to 15 minutes of question and answer as well as discussion. So just to say, um, there, there might be a bit of an issue, hopefully not, but our speaker is, is, is in Mauritius and she's, told me now that they might be having issues with um, internet or Wi-Fi. So if she drops off, hopefully that doesn't happen. We, we have to be aware that that's because um, the, the Wi-Fi or internet didn't cooperate, but I'm hoping um, that it's going to cooperate. And the speaker that I'm speaking about is uh, Dr. Shakuntala Baichu, who's an associate professor at the Department of Digital Technologies, which was earlier Department of Computer Science and, and Engineering at the University of Mauritius. Just a few ground rules. Please make sure that your mic is always muted when you are not speaking. If you have a question, please raise your hand or type it in the chat box. So I advise that we all, if your question is burning and you can't wait until the end of the talk, please type it in the chat box. And obviously I'll, 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 I'll tell um, Professor Shakuntala um, that there is a question and then she can engage because I don't want us to disturb um, a speaker. So the title of today's talk is Cancer Genomics, a driver for transforming diagnosis and treatment of prostate cancer. Prostate cancer, PCA, is one of the most frequent cancer diagnoses made in men and one of the leading causes of death worldwide. Based on Global Care 2020 estimates, over a million new cases, 7%, over 7% of all sites of PCA, um, and over 300,000 of new deaths were reported worldwide in 2020. Hence, there is a need for better predictors of treatment outcome and the patient prognosis for PCA patients and to provide the optimal therapy with minimal side effects. Genomic sequencing of PCA has revealed many DNA alterations leading to deregulated biological processes involved in normal prostate development and cell cycle regulation among others. More precisely, the genetic mutations and rearrangements in PCA can lead to the inactivation of tumor suppressor genes and activation of ochnogenes, which can promote the initiation and the progression of the cancer. Therefore, a better understanding of PCA genomics can help to improve the clinical management of the cancer. So I'm not going to read the whole abstract I sent it out with the ad. Um, if you want to, to find the, um, the abstract, look at the ad that I sent, where obviously you'll see the rest of, um, of the abstract. But just quickly, um, reading a bit of uh, Professor Shakuntala Baichi's uh, bio. Shakuntala holds a, a Bachelor of Engineering in Computer Science, or rather Computer Engineering, an MSc in Distributed Interactive Systems, and a PhD in Computer Science. She is working as an associate professor in the Department of Digital Technologies, earlier Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Mauritius. She's a member of, she's a member of and the site PI of the University of Mauritius Asia Bionet Node, where she also co-chairs the pipeline and computing work package, as well as lead the machine learning project. She's also a member of the Men of African Descent and Cancinoma of the Prostate MedCap project. Her research interests are cancer data analytics, computational cancer genomics, and machine learning. She is currently working on the projects, the analysis of prostate cancer genomics data. Secondly, prediction of prostate cancer using clinical features. Thirdly, survival analysis of colorectal cancer. Fourthly, the prediction of the novel drug targets for color colorectal cancer. For the cancer-related projects, she is using the data sets from the International Cancer Genome Consortium, ICGC, the Cancer Genome Atlas, TG TCGA, the American Association for Cancer Research, AACR, genomics evidence um, Neoplasia Information Exchange and the NCPI Gene Expression Omnibus. Without further ado, Shakuntala, I just want to say thank you so much for agreeing to, to give this webinar. Go ahead and uh, give your talk. Thank you, Babalu. And um, so, uh, in fact, I would say thank you to allow me to uh, talk about what I'm working on. And so today's talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, I'll start with what, what is, what's the state of, of cancer worldwide and then um, and then prostate cancer. 
and then I'm going to show like how uh, genomics can help to improve, you know, the prognosis of prostate cancer. Then I'll move to the status of cancer in Africa, and then uh, you know I'll talk a bit about the MATCA project and what we are doing in that project. So uh, to start with, I'll show you a bit like, so these are, uh, you know, data that have been submitted to the global can from cancer registries worldwide. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, the top of the list is breast cancer and prostate cancer is the second one. And we can see that the incidence of prostate cancer is 30.7 when we talk about uh, as 100,000 people and the mortality rate is 7.7. And this is worldwide. And uh, so you can see it's quite high. And in fact, if you look visually how uh, this is, you know, uh, the, the death related to prostate cancer, where they are ranked worldwide. So uh, cancer ranks, as you can see, as number one and number two in 112 countries out of these 183. So two of them are here, 85. So it ranks as a leading cause of death and an important barrier to increasing life expectancy in every country of the world. And according to the estimates of the WHO and the report from 2000 to 2019, uh, cancer, like I said, is first or second cause in about 112 countries. And uh, you, another 23 countries is third or fourth, it ranks third and fourth. And in Africa, you will know that it ranks about fifth to ninth. Now, the problem is that uh, recently I attended a webinar from African Cancer Registry, and there they mentioned that in Africa, the problem is that a lot of data, I mean, the data is not being submitted to the registry on a regular basis. So it may look like, you know, um, the incident is fifth or ninth, but it could be much higher if the data was submitted, you know, uh, all the data was submitted properly from the cancer registries from all the places. So we can see that cancer is a major killer, you know, worldwide and in Africa also. But. And um, I think everybody knows that cancer is a disease of the genome. That is, um, you know, there are genetic aberrations. Uh, or sometimes we call it a genetic disease. <clears throat> so it is, uh, in fact, there are many other factors, external factors like radiation, environmental factors could also play a role, but genetics plays a very critical role uh, in the progression, initiation and progression of uh, cancer in general. And uh, there are two types of aberrations or mutations that we have in cancer. One is the somatic mutations that you know we accumulate in cells over the course of our lifetime. And the other one is, we call them germ germline mutations or things that we inherit, you know, as genetic variants, so uh, from birth. And now, uh, um, what is cancer genomics? Cancer genomics is the study of the totality of the DNA sequence and the gene expression differences between the tumor cells and the normal cells, you know, of people that we have. And uh, what, how, how, I mean, these aberrations actually, how do they cause cancer actually to, to, to progress and become lethal? So these, they occur when regulatory, uh, regulatory processes break down. It begins when a cell develops, you know, some changes, genetic changes or mutations, most often in, you know, the genes that control the cell cycle uh, uh, and DNA repair, both of them. So in the side cycle, if you know, have activation and you know, the overexpress or in the DNA repair, genes that are responsible for DNA repair, there's some inactivation, you know, this can actually um, help uh, you know, the progression or initiation of cancer. Now these mutations can arise from unrepaired mistakes in DNA replication that can occur during normal cell division or from DNA damage, like I said, caused by exposure to radiation or chemical mutations. Now, when the cell cycle in the DNA repair uh, genes are damaged, the normal checks and balances that we have of the cell growth are actually disrupted. And the cells begin to divide uncontrollably, and these result in you know, what we call cancerous cells. And cancerous cells can also, they start from one location, but actually they can metastasis, uh, you know, you can have metastasis, and they can invade you know, the blood or the lymph vessels to spread throughout the body. And many cancers, uh, when you have uh, the uncontrolled growth of those cells, they can form lumps and that we call, you know, tumors that you have. Going, for example, you can see growth of the uh, skin, et cetera. Now, cancer genomics, uh, like I said, there are two types of mutations. One is we call the inactive, inactivating mutations, or we also call them the loss of function mutations. 
And the second one is called activating mutations. So uh, the inactive, uh, inactivating mutations uh, in tumor, they occur in tumor suppressor genes, which encode growth inhibiting factors. And these tumor suppressor genes are responsible for the pause and control of the cell cycle. So, uh, so basically to suppress tumors, especially when they are DNA damage and um, uh, they can al they allow the cell destruction of abnormal cells. So if there's a mutation, in these type of genes, they you know they stop working and they can you know they allow the, the abnormal cells to grow. Examples of tumor suppressor genes, then there are many of them, but some popular ones are TP53, uh, BRCA1, and BRCA2. And then we have, like I said, activating mut uh, mutations, and these occur in proto oncogenes that we call um, that produce growth of uh, prom growth promoting factors. They're also known as gain of mutate uh, gain of function mutations. And the activations can occur through amplification, uh, point mutation, or several re rearrangements in the genome leading to fusions of genes. So gain of function mutations generally either increase the expression of the gene or the activity of the protein. So for example, then you have the, you know, um, the cells, uh, you know, duplicating very fast. And some examples of uh, proto-oncogenes are EGFR and KRAS. Now prostate cancer uh, is also like, uh, any other cancer can be lethal. Uh, we call it some type PCA or some cancer of the prostate CAP. Is the most commonly diagnosed malignancy in men worldwide as well as in Africa also. So if we look at the charts um, uh, from Globocan, uh, if you look at uh, how the prostate cancer, what is the prostate cancer status uh, worldwide and when you look at in Africa, we can see like in South Africa, we have a quite a high incidence, okay? And mortality also is quite high there. I mean, compared to other places. Then we look at Middle Africa also, it's pretty high. Uh, that again, uh, I'm saying like in many places in Africa, they don't even submit the data from the cancer registry. So based on what they submit, this is what we have. And then in Western Africa, also you can see it's uh, uh, 33.1 and 20.2 is the mortality. East Africa has 27.9 and then 16.3 for the mort mortality and then North Africa. So you can see that it's quite high worldwide and in Africa also. So that's why we have, you know, this, uh, um, you know, we are working on this prostate cancer, especially the MATCA project. And if you look visually, you can see that um, uh, despite that the incidence, if you look at the incidence in Africa, they don't seem to be on the higher end. But when we compare the mortality um, in Africa, you can see it's quite high. So this is the reason um, it's very important to study prostate cancer, especially in, in African men. Now, there is a need for, to study the genomics in prostate cancer to improve the, you know, the prognosis, the treatment of cancer. Now, uh, until recently, the treatment options for prostate cancer depended on the, you know, we call the staging, different staging, TNM staging of the disease, where T refers to the, uh, you know, from the place the, the, the tumor started, the, the, the size and the extent of the main tumor that we call the primary tumor. N refers to the number of nearby lymph nodes that have cancer. And M refers to whether the cancer has, you know, moved to other places, metastasized, and spread from a primary tumor to other parts of the body. And that can become quite difficult to cure. Now, using uh, the, the prognostic variables of um, uh, the T category, the uh, PSA, serum prostate specific antigen, and the pathologic, uh, what we call Gleason score, men with localized prostate cancer placed on, in three categories, low, intermediate, and high risk. Now the low uh, in, to intermediate uh, risk is normally uh, refers to the localized, um, uh, or the local uh, uh, place where the prostate has started. And the high risk normally refers to metastatic. Now, if we use these uh, factors, we can we cannot uh, we can determine you know the, the risk factor of prostate cancer in general, but not the risk of an individual man or individual person. So for that, we actually need prognostic biomarkers uh, based on genomics uh, or the tumor genetics, and this can provide you know targeted or personalized prostate cancer you know therapy. So. Uh, 
The prostate cancer personalized medicine can be realized when uh, the genomic alterations in the prostate cancer studied and identified. A number of genomic alterations are immediately actionable. So if we know that this exists by, for example, FDA, we uh, already has a list of, uh, you know, some drugs that can be used to target those, you know, alterations. Now, identifying those alterations as efficiently as possible and then giving patients access to targeted therapy and clinical study requires a comprehensive uh, strategy. Now, the genomics of prostate cancer, according to a recent paper by uh, Rubin and, uh, you know, and uh, the Michelis in 2018, mentioned that um, has been quite difficult to study uh, compared with other cancer types that we have because of many reasons. Despite that, a lot of efforts started, you know, to study the genomics of prostate cancer as early as in 1980s, 1980s. Now, basically, why uh, uh, it was quite difficult to study that, first of all, you know, where the prostate cancer is located, it was quite difficult, you know, to get sample for that. And then uh, uh, this was act because it was quite um, difficult to get the sample. We couldn't have the Secondly, when we compare prostate cancer with cancers like breast, melanoma, or lung, it doesn't lend itself to simple growth in cultures. So from the earliest attempts to grow prostate cancer in vitro and develop short-term cultures was quite difficult. So the effects of uh, growing that was quite, was hindered and it, they, were, they were not able to culture that. How, um, but luckily, uh, recent work in the development of prostate cancer, organoids, has, uh, you know, uh, reignited this interest. And finally, it has been traditionally difficult to obtain samples from the advanced stage of the prostate cancer. So um, after 1980, um, uh, in the early, in the mid of 1980s, we started getting the samples of prostate cancer. And thanks to, you know, high throughput sequencing, uh, uh, technological advancements that we have in the genomics technologies, uh, we have been able to actually, well, uh, cancer uh, sequencing projects have been able to, you know, sequence uh, prostate cancer genomes using whole genome sequencing, etc. And they have been able to discover um, many new cancer causing mutations. And because of that, new treatment possibilities have, you know, have emerged and that can reverse actually the effect of a patient's uh, specific cancer mutations and of course, improve the survival of the patients. So I'll just go through briefly um, the, the landscape of, uh, uh, you know, genomic landscape of prostate cancer. And um, like I uh, mentioned, there's this paper uh, review by these people in 2018. They provide an overview of the different types of uh, uh, mutations, aberrations that you can have uh, in prostate cancer, which started in, you know, like I said, in the mid 80s. And there are a number of them. So I'll just go briefly through some of them. So throughout that, they noted that this 10Q region is lost. Uh, it's quite common in many prostate cancers. Then uh, the enrichment of, you know, the P53 uh, tumor suppressor gene that you have mutations with that. And that is known to actually, um, uh, you know, uh, favor the progression of cancer, many cancers. This has been confirmed as a, a, a consistent event in prostate cancer. And then there's another gene called the RB1 also, which has been found to be, um, you know, mutated. And then there's that 8P loss, this region also, which affects other tumor suppressor genes. And then we noted that prostate cancer um, patients who have been uh, treated using hormone, uh, these patients uh, develop amplifications fourfold to 20-fold of uh, this gene called uh, androgen receptor. And this actually causes downstream uh, problems in, in a number of, uh, you know, pathways. And then there is this 10Q23. So later I'll show that the, one of the studies that you've done in uh, MATCAP, uh, they have found this, you know, uh, one gene in, uh, in this, sorry, not in 10Q, but in the 8Q, which is the MIC. So you have a number of these, and they are, uh, they've also found that the somatic copy number alterations is quite common in uh, prostate cancer. Uh, about 75% of the localized prostate cancer and losses were found to be five times more common than gains in prostate cancer and most often involve, you know, these regions, 8Q, 13Q, 6Q, etc. Now, in order to be able to um, conduct these studies, the genomic studies, uh, we need to have genomic data. 
So I'll go through a few um, databases uh, which I've worked with and to show you um, we have prostate cancer data available there. So the first one is called the, um, um, the, the Cancer Genome Atlas TCGA or the data is hosted in the Genomic Data Commons uh, by NCI. So I have actually looked through prostate cancer project that we have there. So out of 493 cases, now I'm, I'm showing, you know, the, the, ra the race here because later I'll come to how, uh, you know, this race disparity has, uh, you know, uh, hindered uh, genomic research in many uh, contexts. And especially for prostate cancer, which is supposed to favor, you know, uh, the African men or um, uh, African American men have a higher tendency to develop prostate cancer. However, when you look at the data set, you will see that only 52 of them are, have been reported as Black or African American, and 414 as white. So you can see that we don't have enough data also in terms of, you know, diversity of genome. Then the second um, database that I have used is the International Cancer Genome Consortium. This one has a number of projects. And uh, the, the TCG data is also hosted again here, which is hosted as Pratt US. It's supposed to be the same, but actually when you look at them, they're not, they have to, uh, you know, there are some differences. Uh, uh, and here uh, you have a lot of projects, but unfortunately in this project, uh, they don't report the race of the, uh, you know, the, the donors or the patients. So we don't have any race information there. Then the third one is uh, the AACR Gini data. Uh, this one you have, uh, it's from US. Uh, while the data set in the ICGC and TCGA, uh, well, ICGC is whole genome sequencing based, TCGA is whole exome sequencing based. This one is oncopanel based. You have a number of centers that have submitted data from there and you have also racial information here. But you can see that uh, out of, uh, you know, uh, the number of donors, so you have like 2,700 white and 281 only as, you know, reported as black and a number of them don't even report their race. And then in, uh, I have also used data from uh, gene expression omnibus. So here we use the transcriptomic data. In this data set, we have the gene expression data uh, from NGS or microarray. Uh, in some of the projects, you have clinical information indicating the race, but uh, even if they, a few of them, but even if they report, there are very few African and African American. So now um, I'll come to uh, what is the status of prostate cancer in Africa. And from here, um, I'm going to talk about what the MATCAP project is doing, what we call the MATCAP consortium. And so the slides that I'm going to present uh, from here onwards, many of them are taken from the presentation of Professor Rebeck, which he presented in a number of instances. So um, Africa's future cancer burden by the Global Can um, again shows that uh, there is an um, you know consensus rise in the you know um, number of people uh, getting cancer in Africa and dying of cancer. So you can see that they, in, they expect that in by 2040, there'll be a 94% rise. And while um, malaria used to be a major problem in Africa, so there's going to be a decrease in malaria. So approximately 1.4 million Africans will die of cancer in by 2040, that's by Globacan. And um, cancer kills more Africans, like I said, annually than malaria uh, does worldwide. And sometimes it may happen that because of uh, the rise in cancer, the, 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 we ultimately see a decrease in, uh, you know, rise in death due to cancer. We ultimately see a decrease in death due to other diseases. Now, uh, a paper uh, by Martin et al., uh, which is called the clinical use, well, titled the clinical use of current um, polygenic risk scores may exacerbate health disparities due to lack of diversity uh, you know, in genomics data that we have. So you can see that when you look here, we have a lot of data for European people and much less. And if you look at African, so very few data, you know, from African um, people. So uh, we know that the PRS aims at improving, uh, you know, outcomes via precision medicine. However, if we don't have enough data, then the results that we get when we do PRS, you know, it could bias and, uh, you know, we don't see the actual state. Uh, so that's why there's a real urgent need to have data, you know, from the African continent. 
And to realize the full and equitable potential of you know, this PRS, we really need uh, greater diversity uh, in, genomics, uh, in genetic studies. So that's where we have the MATCAP study that comes into play. And uh, another paper by um, you know, these people, uh, Mana, Rai, and Al, they actually showed that when we don't have enough data, you know, diverse data, the results that we get could be misleading. So in this paper, they have shown that genetic misdiagnosis can occur if only the white population is studied. Like some variants, for example, they showed the example of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So they showed that some variants in the hyper, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy genes were originally thought to be pathogenic because they were found to be rare in white people. Uh, when in fact, these, uh, you know, pathogenic uh, mutations were very common in, you know, when you study the general population and the African population. So based on that, in fact, many uh, patients of the African unspecified ancestry received positive reports uh, with variants misclassified, but afterward they realized that, you know, this is not a pathogenic, I mean, but this, a number of these variants are not pathogenic, in fact, they are benign. So, you know, these were just uh, some papers to show why we need to have a diversity in uh, genetic data again. So to address this lack of the genomic diversity and improve the diagnosis and prognosis of cancer of the, uh, cancer of the prostate, uh, the men of African descent and the carcinoma of the prostate, what we call MATCAP uh, consortium was formed around 2007. And um, uh, by investigators in the US, the UK and Africa and led by Professor Rebecca of the Harvard uh, Thia Chan uh, School and the DFCI. So the aim of this network was to actually address the high burden of prostate cancer among African population. So more specifically to actually improve prostate cancer prevention, detection and treatment in men of the African origin. Uh, to understand the African genome and its role in establishing the prostate cancer risk in Africans and to validate and extend the findings on the genomic regions that have been associated with prostate cancer risk uh, using CHIWA studies. So that's where we have the MATCAP array that has been created recently and a lot of work is being done using the MATCAP array. So the MATCAP network, you have a number of institutions there. Uh, in Africa, you have a few centers which are actually contributing data with genotyping patients, but we have people from other places and uh, well, you see University of Mauritius, we joined about uh, a couple of years back as a collaborator. So we have a uh, you know, number of uh, collaborators working worldwide to actually make this you know, project a success. And to, they have started collecting data and analyzing the data and they are actually seeing what they expected to see based on that data. So there were a number of grants supporting the, the MATCAP project. One of them was the U01, which started in 2015 and supposed to end in 2020. But uh, due to the COVID pandemic, uh, we are still uh, working on that. It's still ongoing um, at no cost. So we are in the final reporting phase and we have submitted uh, you know, continuation of that using an R01 grant. So when they started initially, you know, the, all the ROB forms for data collection, everything protocols were, were, you know, prepared and submitted. And then they started the pilot phase of the data. And then um, there are some studies that have, you know, some papers that have come out with a pilot phase. And after 2017, they started actually collecting the actual data, which is called the accrual phase. And this is still a collection and they are being, you know, analyzed. So we have a lot of data and uh, based on the MATCAP array that we've created, uh, MATCAP has created. So which centers are contributing data on the MATCAP? So you have a number of centers. So this one is from Senegal, uh, the Institut de Formation et de Recherche en Urology. Then we have the UCH, which is the, I think, the University College Hospital in uh, Nigeria and Ibadan in Nigeria. Then we have UATH, this one also is in uh, Nigeria. We have the 37 military, this is in Ghana. The KBTH, this is the Kolebu Teaching Hospital in Accra. And then we have the WITS, uh, in, marked as JNB. And then we have uh, Stellenbosch, the Cape Town one. So these are the centers. And CPGR is actually 
helping to analyze the data from the array that we have. So in 2014, actually, there was uh, one study done by um, Hai Singh and Al. She's from the Stanford University and member of the MATCAP. And in this study, uh, they found that uh, when they compared that African-American men's men are, are actually have a higher, um, you know, um, risk of um, developing prostate cancer, even when, uh, you know, they study the people from the US data that they have. And they also looked at the data from Ghana and this confirm that you know men of African origin have a higher risk of developing prostate cancer. Uh, so out of the Matka project, there's another paper that came in 2018 by Joe Lachance and a team. The paper title is uh, Genetic Hitchhiking and Population Bottlenecks, which contribute to prostate cancer disparities in men of African descent. Uh, so they looked at uh, you know mutations that are uh, you know uh, responsible more for, you know, prostate cancer in African men. So they investigated the population structure of uh, about 68 uh, previously reported GWAS, LSI, and calculated the something called the genetic disparity distribution, uh, contribution, sorry, uh, statistics to identify the SNPs that contribute the most to differences in um, uh, prostate cancer risk across populations. By integrating the GWAS results with allele frequency data, they generated the genetic risk scores for 45 African men and about 19 non-African population. Uh, they tested um, the tests of natural selection were used to assess why some SNPs have large allele frequency across the population, and they actually reported, uh, you know, this SNP to be quite common in African. Uh, well to be under selection uh, in the European population. And they try to study, uh, uh, the, you know, wh what is this doing? Why it is under selection in the European population? So I'll come to that in a couple of slides. And uh, this is in the region of uh, 2Q37. So they found that 47% uh, uh, it's 47% higher in Africans versus non-African, you know, uh, risk allele frequency that they found. And uh, this is under positive selection in European population. Actually, this one is adjacent to uh, uh, something which is relevant to pigmentation dilution, at least for skin color. And um, so this can actually, this actually inferred that the haplotype that protects against uh, prostate cancer hitchhiked or uh, evolved to high frequency in the Europeans while it didn't in the African, you know, um, genomes. So this pigmentation maintenance allele, um, you have the dilution and the maintenance. So, and this dilution one, um, they didn't, it didn't actually evolve in the darker people, in African people, but actually evolve, you know, to give more protection to the, to the non-African people. So this another uh, result that showed that uh, you know um, people of African origin have uh, you know uh, the, the genomics show that you know they they can have a higher risk of uh, you know developing prostate cancer compared to other people. And the most recent paper that came in 2020, uh, this one talks about the MATCAP array, which we call the custom genotyping array. Uh, which was developed by MATCAP. So this uh, actually reveals population level heterogeneity for genetic uh, risk of prostate cancer and other cancers in Africa. And they compared that with the data that we have from that array with uh, other po population and within you know, different population in Africa itself. So in fact, as of 2016, uh, they found that 81% of all GWAS samples that we have were of European ancestry. And 14% of those were only from East uh, uh, Asian ancestry, and this didn't focus on the Sub-Saharan Africa. So the this uh, paper talks about you know the prostate cancer status in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. Additionally, um, existing genotyping arrays like they saw that do not um, uh, capture 
a genetic variation in diverse African population. So both these issues uh, was, uh, you know, was limiting, uh, you know, the research on cancer genetics in African populations. So to address this problem, like I said, the MATCAP network developed this customized genotyping array optimized for fine mapping and detecting novel associations with prostate cancer in African population. So in this paper, they actually analyze a pilot data set of about 800 individuals from this sub-Saharan Africa. So um, the, we can find information about this MATCAP array from Thermo Fisher site. It's available there, publicly available. So what we have there is uh, uh, we have two pack design and the markers that have been uh, that are present on the array are enriched for GWAS loci and uh, near cancer susceptibility loci and uh, prostate uh, expression quantitative traits loci, markers uh, that tag the African polymorphism. And uh, total, they had about 1.5 million SNPs. So on these two pegs, so peg one had about 850,000. And peg two, so there was some about um, 1900 probe sets that were overlapping on both pegs. So these overlapping markers were chosen to be on both um, based uh, prioritized for cap loci, that is prostate cancer loci, and markers that satisfy multiple inclusion criteria. So about 38,000 unique markers associated with traits and diseases from, you know, uh, EBI and NHGRI, GWAS catalog are included on. Uh, the array. Every 1,000 genome SNP with an African minor allele frequency uh, created on 0.05 that was located within this of a known prostate cancer hit or within five kilobytes of other cancer associations were found there. And uh, they had about 24,000, about 24,500 prostate um, EQTLs with p value cutoff of 10th above minus 9. So um, in this, uh, the, when they evaluated the MATCAP array, uh, they had 3, 399 prostate cancer cases and 43 can, uh, controls. So the MATCAP array successfully uh, tags common and rare variation in African genomes. Uh, the proportions of the SNPs in the one, two, 11 populations, uh, African population ancestry are successfully tagged by markers on the MATCAP array, and this is shown there. Now here the common SNPs have the minor allele frequency uh, greater than 0.05 and the rare one between 0.01 and 0.05. And when you look at this, for example, if you look at the Ethiopian one, uh, we know that uh, uh, this may contribute to less effective capture of, you know, the genetic variation. And the reason that they gave is maybe genomes of the Northeast African population contain admix with non-African population. That's why it seems to be quite um, low compared to the others. And uh, they compared this uh, MATCAP array with the Infinium Onco array based on the 1000 Genome Project and the H3 Africa array. So in the first one, we have the uh, a Venn diagram, which shows the overlap between the markers on uh, the three arrays. So the sizes, you can see what's common between them. So MATCAP and H3 Africa, we have, in fact, you'll see you have more. And the size of the Venn diagram actually shows how many markers we have, while the onco array, we have less, because this was based on, you know, more white population. And um, the second one in, B, they have this violin plot, which actually uh, shows the allele frequencies, you know, from these three arrays. And the mean derived allele frequency, you can see in the MATCAP array is more or less uniform, but uh, in the ONCO array, you can see it's not that uniform, but in H3 Africa, it's more uniform than in the ONCO array. So it suggests that MATCAP array is relatively less biased uh, with respect to the SNP selection. And uh, here we have uh, um, joint site frequency spectrum of markers on the MATCAP array. And African and pool non-African allele frequencies from 1000 Genome Project are shown here. And we find that the MATCAP array is enriched for markers that are polymorphic in Africa, but monomorphic outside of Africa, uh, vice versa. 
And uh, here um, we show the densities of the markers found in different uh, genomic regions. And they vary by the array, so we have different colors. Uh, we have one for the MATCAP array, for the uh, ONCO array, and for the H3 Africa array. Yes. Uh, here we focus on the 8Q24, which is a cancer-associated genomic region that contains uh, uh, a couple of genes. And in fact, we have the MYC gene, which uh, I mentioned when we was looking at the genomic landscape of prostate cancer. So numbers of the markers we have per 100 kilobytes are shown in you know the three different arrays. And uh, in this one, uh, we show the uh, uh, how the MATCAP array reveals the population structure because the data has been collected from different sites. Uh, for, uh, we have data from, uh, uh, I mentioned earlier, from Senegal which is the Hoggy, the Senegal. Then we have the 37 military, this is from Accra. And the KBTH, this is also from Ghana. And uh, we have the University College Hospital Ibadan, UCH. We have the University Abuja Teaching Hospital also in Nigeria. And WITS from Johannesburg. And then we have SU Stellenbosch. So <clears throat> this uh, shows the location of the sites. And then this one is a multi-dimensional scaling plot of the 802 MATCAP samples. And we see the Senegalese uh, individuals in gold. And uh, we have the Nigerian individuals in green, in the top left, and the South African ones in blue. So we, uh, it's been found that the Nigerians from Ibadan with the light green are closer in this uh, you know, plot in space to the Ghana individuals, the Nigerians are from Abuja itself. The right to left gradient of the blue points in this suggests that some individuals from South Africa uh, share a fraction of their genetic and ancestry with the present day Nigerians. And when we rotate this uh, about 85 degrees and we plot it on the, you know, African. Uh, uh, map here we get um, like this gene these genes actually they mirror the geography and the samples from geographical close uh, locations tend to share greater amounts of genetic uh, similarity of course because they're closer they have more people mixing and lastly we have this admixture plot of the uh, 802 samples and uh, they have used a number, uh, they have used the cross validation with K values, different values. And they saw that the, the K is equal to three gives the best fit. And um, so um, they found that individuals from Ibadan share ancestry with samples from Ghana, like I mentioned earlier. They contain moderate amounts of light green in, um, ancestry at K is equal to four. And similarly, individuals from the Johannesburg contain traces of uh, genetic ancestry that are primarily found in Nigeria. This is perhaps, uh, you know, for due to what they call the Bantu expansion over the 5,000 years. And K is equal to five actually gives uh, uh, reveals evidence of the population structure within South Africa itself with greater proportions of light blue. Ancestry found in Johannesburg in widths compared to Cape Town. Now both study sites from Accra and Ghana have similar you know, genetic ancestry profiles. And um, lastly, uh, in this paper, they, they discussed about uh, the divergence in the polygenic risk scores between the European and the African population. So this is the European one. You can see it's less, has smaller risk. Uh, so, um, and then among the African, they are pretty much, you know, close, but we see that this one, uh, the dark green one has higher risk. And then the golden one, uh, the hoggy Senegal one has smaller risk compared to the, you know, uh, this dark green one. So the median PRS values for each study site are represented, you know, with the colors here. So despite the similarity between the risk 
for all the sites that we have in Africa. We observe within continent heterogeneity for the predicted risk of prostate cancer. And the rank order of the MATCAP study sites from lowest to highest as uh, the Senegal, uh, you know, the golden one. And then we have the uh, KBTH, the WITS, and then uh, the uh, Stellenbosch, Cape Town. Then we have UCH and then uh, the Ghana one, the 37 military, and then we have UATH. So individuals from Dakar, Senegal have lower predicted risk of prostate cancer than other African study sites. And conversely, individuals from you know, Abuja, the dark green one, have higher predicted risk of prostate cancer um, compared to African, uh, you know, other African study sites. So this is based on the seven sites for which they have collected data. And uh, I think that's it. And there are, num there are now the GWAS data is still coming in. So there are a lot of other papers that uh, you know, the MATCAP consortium is working on. And these data are also available for other uh, researchers who want to work on, but they have to submit a DAC for that. And I would like to thank uh, Professor Rebeck, uh, who is the PI of this project, MATCAP, uh, and the MATCAP members. And of course, I would like to thank Ashri Bayanet, uh, for which I've been a member for a long while. And this is a photo from the last meeting that we had in 2019. In fact, the last travel meeting that we had before the pandemic in November 2019. And that's it. I'd like to thank, for your, thank you all for your attention. And if you have any question, um, I'll try to answer to the best of my abilities. But if it's related to you know, the biology or the epidemiology of cancer, then I may not be able to answer you know, to the best. Thank you very much. OK. Thank you so much. Uh, that was brilliant, Shakun. Um, and I'm glad that I um, cooperated because I was a bit worried like that you're going to drop off um, during the um, the presentation. So well done. Thank you so much. Um, it's question and answer and discussion time. So if you have any question, please raise your hand. I'm just going to um, stop sharing so that I can check the questions also. OK, sure. Yeah. And you can type in the, in the chat box as well um, if you have any questions or comments. Um, or you can raise your hand and we can give you the mic yeah. uh, to speak. Yes. So just to clarify, you know, uh, you've seen like uh, my, my training has been in computer science all the while. So I'm on these projects from, you know, the computing, machine learning, uh, you, know, and, you know, perspective. So I'm working on other papers from the cancer, prostate cancer, on prostate cancer genomics, but, you know, mostly from the data analytics and angle perspective. Um, Ray, I see you raise your hand. Go ahead and ask your question, Ray. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, sure. I can hear you. Uh, thank you. My name is Ray. I'm a freelance science journalist. I'd like to thank you, Dr. Baichu, for the presentation. That was very informative. I have a question to ask. Uh, you talked about the African Cancer Registry. Mm -hmm. In brief, what is this? Uh, and also, Say okay. Yeah, so this one, you know, in all countries, you have a cancer registry. I, I'll find the exact name for that because in the last webinar that we had in MATCAP, there's somebody who presented on that. So all the cancer registries in the, you know, different countries in Africa, they submit their data there. Okay, so these data are available, of course, they're not free to, to actually access them because I asked them if we can use them to analyze. So I think there is cost associated with that. So they mentioned that and uh, not all African countries submit data on a regular basis there. So what they submit is, you know, like how the incidence of cancer for different cancers that you have in your country and what is the death associated with cancer. So this is the kind of data they submit in this registry that you have in African Cancer Registry. And in fact, I was surprised that Mauritius is one of the countries that regularly submit data there, very regular in submitting data there. Yeah. Okay, uh, just my last question. Uh, what could be the main reason preventing a lot more African countries from submitting data in a regular manner? What's the problem? I think maybe, you know, access to, um, you know, this, maybe access to uh, healthcare because many people, they might not be even visiting, you know, the hospital for, you know, reasons. And prostate cancer normally develops at a later stage, like, you know, the, the age that we have, mainly when I'm looking at data that we've collected from a number of sites there. So 
uh, as early as, you know, 47, 48, but normally it's in the range of 50 onwards, you know, that you have uh, the, the, uh, the people start having problem of, of, of prostate cancer. So that's when they should be, uh, you know, visiting. And in fact, um, if they do like the PSA test on a regular basis, uh, this can also be used as a, you know, by a marker to actually, uh, you know, uh, predict whether some, some people are, you know, bound to develop prostate cancer at a later stage, because the higher the PSA value, the, so in many countries, maybe they don't even have the facility to go and, you know, get that PSA test done. So I think it's access to healthcare in many countries in Africa. And not only for prostate cancer, but I think many cancers, for that matter. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for that question, Ray, uh, and for your answers, uh, Shakun. We still have time. We have about seven minutes left. So if there are any comments slash questions, please do raise your hand or do type in the chat box, um, and Shakun will be able to, to engage with you. Thank you. So either the presentation was very simple or it was very difficult. That's why we don't have questions. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a good sign. So don't, <laughs> I see Ray, <laughs> and again, Ray, do you have another question? Well, yes, uh, uh, I think I can still go ahead. Um, uh, I have one more question. You talked something about high incidence of yeah. prostate cancer in South Africa in particular, and m high mortality in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, is it because that's, South Africa publishes more data than compared to other I think so. Yeah, I think that could be one reason, like, because South Africa may be submitting data, you know, more data compared to, like you saw in North Africa, they don't have, the incidence seems to be low, but then when you look at the death related to prostate cancer was quite high in Africa in general. So yeah, I think data, data is a major um, issue indeed. Um, thank you so much. So I will, just to repeat, I've been recording this webinar, so it's going to be up on YouTube. I'll email you um, all the, the recording. It's going to be on our YouTube channel. It's also live on Facebook. So if you are impatient and you want to watch um, the recording sooner, you, you can go to our Facebook channel, HJ Bionet, um, and you can find um, the recording that was recorded. Shakun, um, looking at the time, and I just want to say thank you so much. This was brilliant. I really appreciate your time and um, effort in giving this webinar. Thank you, Babalu. Actually, well, when you told me, I was like surprised, but I think I'm happy that I actually prepared that because, you know, I really, I had, I read even more uh, of what I was doing. You know, like I said, I normally work from the computing side, but I actually went and read, you know, from the, you know, epidemiology side a bit more on cancer. No, you, you did a phenomenal job. So thank you so much. Um, and to all our attendants, thank you so much for attending. See you next month. There'll be a, a, a different um, host next month because I'll be on leave. So Wisdom will be will be the host for the um, June's webinar. So Wisdom has so a question. Wisdom, ha Wisdom has a question. Wisdom, I, I actually, I'll have to check with the team uh, if the data is throughout, uh, you know, um, Ghana, or it's just from, you know, some places in Accra. Actually, for example, I know the data that they've collected in, in WITS, like uh, this data has been, you know, from people who normally visit a specific public hospital. So the data will be coming, you know, from, so I don't know who, well, who are the, you know, the, the cases that they have actually enrolled there. So I'll, I'll have okay. to check with them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, we have a number of very prominent and large hospitals like the Kumasi, the Kumasi Hospital and then one also in Tamale that have a, a, a large number of patients. So probably I thought maybe there were other samples that probably could have been collected from that for the analysis. I just wanted to know. Okay, so I think it depends mostly on who are the PIs from, you know, people on, on board on the project. But I'll okay. check with them, yeah. And I think I'd like to mention that um, uh, Professor Rebecca and the team, they're open to having more collaborators, especially from H3 Bionet, because 
they know that we are working on the you know analysis and we're developing a number of tools so i think anybody who's interested to work with them just drop me an email you know and you know i can we can put in together and, and i mentioned to 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 pabalo that actually i got into in touch with the, the in the matcap through a webinar that pabalo organized three years back so they you know they're very open to having more collaborators yeah thanks Okay, thank you for that uh, question, Wisdom. Just okay, just to check that I'm not closing anyone off. Is there any burning last question or comment before I say goodbye? Just checking. Going once, going twice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it seems we we gotta have to say goodbye. Um, Shakun, thank you so much. If you have you have questions, please do email Shakun. Um, I can also share his, her email address when I'm sending you the resources um, in the next few days. So you will, you, you can um, get in touch with Shakun uh, and you can speak further about um, any possible collaborations. Thank you so much, everybody. See you next month for a different webinar with a different speaker. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I will stop recording now so that uh, people can either chat on the side, but I'll close the room um, in a few minutes as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Goodbye. Yeah, Pamela, should I submit?